So hi guys, so this is the video lecture I told you to watch over your Thanksgiving break. Um, hair is looking crazy. This is chapter 15, the autonomic nervous system. So this first part just is a review. Um, we've seen this drawing many a time, so let's take a look at this. So if we have a stimulus, we have to have some receptors receiving this stimulus and taking it to the central nervous system. So what are those receptors? So we have somatic sensory and visceral sensory. All right, somatic sensory uh, receives all those voluntary, what's going to be voluntary responses. And then visceral sensory receives everything that is going to be an involuntary response. All right. So let's see what happens after it is received into the central nervous system. The somatic sensory neurons are going to take it to, after it is integrated in the central nervous system, to a somatic motor neuron. And if you remember right, what are those effectors? Hopefully you're answering me right now. Yep, skeletal muscle. So we could draw a little skeletal muscle right there. But what about visceral uh, motor? We have two flavors of those. Some are short at first, and then long. And others are long at first, and then short. These are visceral motors. And what are those um, effectors? Remember, these are the involuntary. These are smooth muscle, cardiac, so heart, and then glands. Hopefully you already knew those, which I'm sure you did. Okay. And we're going to name these specific types of nerves. So let's go ahead and compare these two. So some likes and dislikes, or unlikes. Visceral motor and somatic motors. So what do they have in common? Well, they both pass through the anterior gray horn of the spinal cord. So they pass through the anterior gray horn of the spinal cord. Visceral motors, their cell bodies, the collection of cell bodies, are in the lateral gray horns. Whereas the cell bodies of the somatic motor neurons are found in the anterior gray horns. That says gray, promise. <laughs> Another difference between the two is that visceral motors, like we saw here, are two motor pathways long. Whereas somatic motors are typically just one motor pathway long. Okay. All right. So we have two flavors of visceral motors, and they're found in certain sections of the spinal cord. The first one is called the craniosacral. Craniosacral. So that means that it's going to be found in the cranium and then in the sacral region. And these are typically parasympathetic in nature. The other one is thoracolumbar. And you guessed it, those are typically sympathetic in nature. Okay? Parasympathetic autonomic nervous system and parasympathetic autonomic nervous system, or sympathetic autonomic, autonomic nervous system. Okay? As for the somatic motor neurons, those are, can be found anywhere along the um, spinal cord. Okay. 
Let's look at some anatomy or players in the central nervous system. Let's remember that autonomic nervous system includes both visceral sensory and visceral motor neurons. Okay, so this is just a sagittal section, mid-sagittal section of the brain. Some main players are, of course, the hypothalamus. Here in pink, the thalamus here in blue. The pituitary gland, the pons, and then the medulla and the brainstem. Okay. So let's remember that the main purpose is to maintain fluid balance and ultimately homeostasis through the autonomic nervous system and how all of this is incorporated through a visceral motor response. Okay. All right, let's get to it. Let's start off by talking about the parasympathetic branch of the autonomic nervous system. So here on the left-hand side will be the central nervous system, and then on the right-hand side will be what it does in the periphery. All right, so if you remember, we had two parts. We had the cranial section, and then we had the sacral. So cranial, to be specific, it was cranial nerve number three, seven, nine, and 10. And then sacral was S2 through S4. All right. So the overall function of the parasympathetic nervous system, autonomic nervous system, is to decrease stress. So it is the chill out portion of the autonomic nervous system. Its aim is to calm you down. So it's not the portion that you are going to use when you're running from the bear. Right? So let's look at what the neurons look like. So it begins here in the central nervous system, the cell body ganglion. So this would be the preganglionic neuron. All right. The long one is the preganglionic neuron with the parasympathetic nervous branch. All right. It's going to release a neurotransmitter, specifically acetylcholine. Oops, that's a different color green. We need for it to be. And it has a receptor on the postganglionic neuron. That is a specific type of receptor called a nicotinic receptor. A nicotinic. That's an N. Nicotinic receptor. That postganglionic neuron then releases a neurotransmitter, again, acetylcholine, that has receptors on um, some type of visceral effector. Here we did the heart. Those receptors are called muscarinic receptors. Muscarinic receptors. All right, so the first one was a nicotinic receptor. The other one is a muscarinic receptor. So here's the preganglionic neuron, and then this is the postganglionic neuron. Okay. All right. Let's see what that next part is. So what are these guys really doing? We said the first one was a nicotinic receptor. So basically, um, they close sodium channels that have a binding site for acetylcholine. Okay. Um, acetylcholine binds, sodium channels open, and sodium channels rush, where sodium rushes in. Sodium creates 
in action potential in the postganglionic neuron. And this passes the message, the message along. In the muscarinic receptor that was on the effector, it stimulates a G protein second messenger cascade. So it causes certain proteins to be made and then some sort of enzymatic reaction. I'm not going to ask you to know that whole process. Just know that it causes that. Okay? All right. So let's look at some anatomy. So the first ones we talked about were the cranial nerves. And that was number three, cranial nerve number three, seven, um, nine, and ten. So what's what are these guys doing? Well, number three. When activated, its parasympathetic purpose is to cause your pupils to contract. And if you think about it, this makes sense, right? So when you're relaxed, you're letting in less light because you don't need to be aware of as much. So your pupils will get smaller. The next one, number seven, cranial nerve number seven, is responsible for salivation, so making saliva. Oddly enough, crying. Number nine is also to salivate. And then number 10, which is the vagus nerve, if you remember, has its hands in many different things. But its main function, about 75 to 80 percent, is parasympathetic. Okay. We'll go into more detail later on, but just know that its main function is parasympathetic. All right, so what about the spinal cord portion? What does that look like? And if you remember, parasympathetic spinal cord anatomy happens within the sacral portion, specifically S2 through S, dang it, S4. All right, so remember the cell body ganglia of the, of the preganglionic nerve usually occurs within the lateral horn, the lateral gray horn. So the neuron travels through here. The postganglionic neuron, which is shorter, towards the effector. So here's some sort of effector. All right. So remember, this is the pre-ganglionic neuron. And that would be the post-ganglionic neuron. And it's important to note here that the pre-ganglionic neuron is much longer and the postganglionic neuron is much shorter and closer to the effector. Okay. Also, the preganglionic neuron is non-myelinated. Meaning there's no myelin. No myelin. Alright. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop here at the parasympathetic branch and then um, we'll continue on later at the sympathetic branch. All right, so I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. I'm going to post some questions after this that I will expect you to answer along with watching this video. So I'll see you when you get back. And don't forget that you have an exam on Monday that we can get back from Thanksgiving. All right, bye. Happy studying.